Hey, Popcorn Kid Crew. Guess what today is? Today is Taco Tuesday. And guess what? We have a fun story that we're going to read today. Have you ever heard the story called The Boy Who Cried Wolf? First of all, I bet you're wondering, what does that mean, The Boy Who Cried Wolf? Well, I am so glad you asked. We're going to read and we're going to find out exactly what that means. But before we get started, did you say that I am the greatest today? Did you say it? Let me hear you. Let Miss V hear you say, I am the greatest. Did you say it? I believe you said it. You guys, we are doing so much together. We're meeting new friends. We're talking to each other. And the Popcorn Kit crew is really growing. Thank you so much for everyone, for all of your kind comments. And thank you for sharing with others. I'm so happy to be a part of your family. And thank you for sharing the stories with your kids. And kids, guess what? Even adults are enjoying our stories. I have a secret. I enjoy the stories too. I enjoy them. You ready? All right, here we go. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Peter who lived in a little village in the mountains with his parents who were sheep farmers. It was Peter's job to watch over the flock and protect the sheep from wolves. Day after day, Peter sat on the mountainside watching the flock. It was very quiet with no one but sheep for company. No wolves ever came to eat the sheep. Peter got very bored. He tried to amuse himself by climbing rocks and trees or by crawling through the grass and counting the sheep one by one. One, two, three. 64, 65, counted Peter. Oh, I wish there was something exciting that would happen. I'm so bored. Same old mountain, same old sheep. Finally, one day, Peter couldn't stand being bored anymore. I know what to do, he grinned to himself. He started shouting at the top of his voice, Wolf! Help! Wolf! Down in the village, a man heard Peter's cries. Quick! He shouted to some of the other men. We need to go and help Peter. There's a big wolf attacking the sheep. The villagers grabbed their axes, their forks and shovels and brooms and ran up the mountain to where Peter was shepherding this flock. When they got there, puffing and panting, all was quiet and the sheep were gracefully grazing the grass. Where's the wolf? One of the villagers cried. Peter roared with laughter. There's no wolf. I was just playing. The men were very, very angry with Peter. You mustn't cry wolf when there isn't one, they said. That night, Peter got a telling off from his mother and was sent to bed without any supper. A telling off means she fussed him and she should have. What he did wasn't nice wasn't nice of him. For a while after this, Peter managed to behave himself. He climbed the mountainside with the sheep every day and watched over them quietly. The villagers soon forgot about his trick. And then one day, Peter got really bored again. 
he had already run up and down the rocks, climbed three trees, and counted the sheep 10 times. What can I do now? Same old mountain, same old sheep. He groaned to himself. With a sigh, he slumped to the ground. As he was sitting there, an idea popped into his head. He picked up some sticks lying nearby and started banging them hard together. Then at the top of his voice, he shouted, Wolf! Help! Wolf! Please hurry! There's a big wolf eating the sheep! Down in the village, a crowd of people started gathering when they heard the loud banging and shouting coming from the mountainside. What's all that noise? Someone cried. It's Peter. He's in trouble, shouted someone else. Quick, there must be a wolf on the prowl. Once again, the villagers grabbed their forks shovels and brooms. They ran up to the mountain to chase away the wolf and save poor Peter and his sheep. And once again, when they got there puffing and out of breath, all was quiet and the sheep were grazing peacefully. Peter, what's happened? shouted one of the men angrily. There is no wolf, laughed Peter. I was only playing. You shouldn't make jokes like that, said another man. It's not good to lie. The villagers marched back down the mountain towards the village. That night, Peter got an even bigger telling off from his mother and once again had to go to bed without any supper. Look at everybody coming. Coming to rescue Peter. And he's sitting down laughing. Boy, I know what my mother and father would do. I don't know if it's what they call, what do they call it, a, a, te a telling off? I would have gotten something. I don't even want to tell you what my parents would have done. Ready? For a few days, the villagers went around moaning about Peter and his tricks. But after a while, the incident was forgotten and Peter continued to climb the mountainside every day with the sheep. He had decided that he would try and behave himself. Especially since he didn't want another scolding from his mother. A few weeks later, Peter stood counting the sheep as usual to pass the time. He noticed that some of them were bleeding nervously and he climbed up a tree and took a look around to see what was upsetting them. To his horror, he saw a big hairy wolf. The terrorizing creature was creeping through the grass towards the flock with its jaws open and its long tongue hanging out. Peter could see the wolf's sharp pointed He is really terrifying. Oh my gosh. He's going to terrorize all the sheep. What what do you think's going to happen, guys? Let's keep reading so we can find out. Shaking with fear, he started screaming. Wolf! Help, wolf! Please hurry. There's a big wolf about to eat the sheep. A few people down in the village heard his cries for help, but they went about their business 
as usual. It's only Peter playing another trick, they said to each other. Does he think he can fool us again? And so nobody went to Peter's rescue. By nightfall, Peter hadn't returned and his parents became very concerned. Peter never missed his supper. Something bad must have happened. Peter's father gathered the people of the village and together they hurried up the mountain carrying flaming torches. A terrible sight met their eyes. Do you all want me to keep reading? If you don't want to listen, close your ears. They said a terrible sight met their eyes. Close your ears if you don't want to listen. All the sheep were gone. There really had been a wolf this time. Peter was still in the tree, shaking and crying. I cried out, wolf, why didn't you come? He wept. Nobody believes a liar, even when he's speaking the truth, said Peter's father, helping him climb out of the tree. Peter hung on to his father all the way home. He never wanted to see another wolf again. And Peter finally learned his lesson. He never told a lie again. And he always got to eat his dinner. The end. You all, I don't know what to say about this story. I feel so bad about the sheep and that terrible wolf. The boy who cried wolf. Do you understand what that means now? He lied about the wolf a few times and then when it really happened, nobody believed him. So you guys, it's not good to lie. We always have to tell the truth. And we always have to make sure when we're uncomfortable uncomfortable about something happening, we have to let somebody know that we're uncomfortable. But telling a lie is not good. Did you like this story, you guys? Did this guy did this story teach us something, guys? I hope so. Well, you know, Popcorn Kit Crew, Miss V always says that I love you. And I always want to give you a hug. I wish you peace and love. And I'll see you soon.